Good afternoon, everybody. This is Nihal from the House of Turkey, and I am in Scotland, just waiting for Morag to join me for a live um, this afternoon. And before Morag joins, I can tell you where we're going to be for this weekend. Um, in a bit, I'll be setting off and go to go and meet um, Izzet and Dr. Ramsey and Selin. And we'll be heading down to Croydon for our live. Oh, here we go. Not live. Let's see if I can actually add her in. Can you see me okay, is it? I'm all right. Hi, Nihal. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Yep. Very nice. How come you're looking dazzlingly beautiful today? But I mean, it's it's one o'clock in the afternoon. I know, but it's, um, I'm off today. I wasn't working today, so yeah, just are you put a bit of a gonna, on. What are you going to do? Are you going to go into the um, the festival? Uh, uh, no, I'm doing that on Sunday, going up to see a show on Sunday. So, Who are you going to see? Uh, my... my Myra's story. Oh yeah. So, um, yeah. Guess guess who I've seen. Um, the, the um, when did I go? I think it was last Friday. Was it last Friday or Saturday? I went to see the hypnosis in a hypnosis one. Yeah. Um, that's made me really good. It is. It was brilliant. Um, it was so funny. It was hilarious. And I've seen, um, I've seen somebody. But I just the name just escaped me. I've seen that, and I went to the Paul Merton one. Um, good, very good. Um, the Paul Merton was really good as well. Um, so let's start with the questions because people are wondering what have you had done, and obviously you were in the Edinburgh consultation day. Yeah, and we had your consultation about something else in you know, a um, but I will let you actually explain what you had done and what you're planning to have and um and you know we'll basically talk about it honestly yeah. about you know about good bad and ugly you know absolutely it's, yeah and and then how did our journey started how you came to um obviously the house door turkey um that kind of stuff yeah uh, god well i think the that, it was a pandemic just to give you but prior to the pandemic um i think this journey had started back in 2019 uh-huh when we first yeah. met um, correct and at that time you know i was basically i wasn't suitable for surgery at all um uh -huh. the issues that I had with my breathing and you know various health issues are basically took me almost two years to get yes. myself ready for the surgery ready to be able to that was you were one of the first people because it yeah. was at the beginning of when, when I first started and and it was actually a quite good you know like when you completed your medical questionnaire and when we assessed you and it was actually um let's not take any chances yeah and let's get you fit you know let's get you fit and ready for the surgery and as you said that took like two years in the making yeah but in that two years we never we lost then, contact yeah that's right yeah and then obviously i i was booked all ready to go pandemic hit <laughs> so um cancelled um and then it was just oh i was at the stage where i was ready to swim yeah you <laughs> Were you? I think we were all at the time, and um, we were all considering doing different things just yep. to be able to get there well, to do anything. Is it? And then obviously, um, the rules slightly changed in Turkey. They weren't taking anybody from the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, 
but obviously you working with Pam and Ali and what have you were able to figure out a way to get us there but it meant that we were having to come for two weeks because we were having to quarantine yep. before we actually went for the surgery mm -hmm. um, I think so, um, also I think we should mention you know Pam and Ali when it comes to it you absolutely know, who, they the have been a great, you know, unbelievable. Yeah. The amount of work that went yeah. in at the time, you know, trying to organize everything and having that local spot just down the road from you is also important. Yeah. And yeah, you know, that was that was a bit of a, you know, kind of time. Yeah. That, um, yeah. You know, and I mean, right the way through, you know, sort of being books and then being cancelled and everything, you know, Pam and Ali were always they were in touch all the time, mm -hmm. you know, any questions, anything like that, you know, any updates at all, you know, Pam was straight on the phone to let me know. Mm -hmm. um, but finally got there, uh, March of 2021. True. Um, True. Um, so, yeah, stayed in the lovely hotel in, in Focha. True, uh, which I organised, you know, yeah. just for us. It was our quarantine yeah. hotel. Um, so, you know, it was, you know, thinking back, um, it was almost unbelievable what, what we managed to do. Exactly. Um, renting a hotel and putting everybody in there, getting everybody tested in the hotel before we bring them to the hospital yeah. and then bringing them back. It was just yeah. insane when you think about it. It was amazing. You know, it really was amazing how it all worked and it all went so smoothly. Um, well, there was 10 of us in total. Um, so we were split into the two groups. Mm -hmm. So five of us went, left the hotel on the Wednesday and were having our surgery on the Thursday. Mm -hmm. And the other five would leave on the Thursday and have their surgery on the, the Friday. Yeah. Um, hospital was unbelievable, absolutely immaculate, you know, couldn't, couldn't fault it. When I, I did a wee, I was on FaceTime and my daughter walking around the, the hospital room and she was like that, is, is that the hotel? I was like, no, this is the yeah. hospital. <laughs> it just gets better and better. Yeah. So that was, that was your sleeve journey. I mean, that was for, my sleeve. For, yeah. for me, um, you know what came after you know like um how um how much did you lose so in total mm -hmm. i lost just under nine stone mm -hmm. uh, before i felt i was ready to move on to my next stage mm -hmm. um which adds accompanied a friend of mine who um Gillian, who again was one of my sleeve sisters, and Gillian and I have stayed friends right the way through, you know, since Good. then. Um I'd accompanied Gillian when Gillian was going to get her arms done and actually had a face to face consultation with Dr. Ramsey. And in my mind, my arms were my worst thing mm -hmm. and I hated them. You know. Um but Dr. Ramsey, being Dr. Ramsey, had said to me, you know, I'd said, obviously, I was always going to have a mummy makeover, but it, mm -hmm. it was my arms that were bothering me more than anything. And Dr. Ramsey had said, well, you'd get more benefit from having the mum, mummy makeover first, and then we can look at doing your, your arms later. Mm -hmm. So... Obviously, I took his advice, and September 2023. Correct. Um, I came over again and had my mummy makeover, but again, again, was amazing. You know, Dr. Ramsey is such a gentleman. He's lovely. Yeah. I mean, um, we work together now for the last five years yeah. with Dr. Ramsey. He doesn't talk much, but he's the kindest, oh, loveliest yeah. and most professional man I know. And, um, you know, it's 
Uh, he's er he's on the flight now. He's arriving to yeah. London tonight, so I'll meet him in London um, later on this evening. Um, yeah, he's he, the way that he suggested. Obviously, a lot of people at the moment are trying to have the surgeries too soon, yeah. and you know when their BMIs. First of all, we have to get your BMI to a healthy level. Yeah. And second of all, you need we need to make sure that you're actually fit for surgery. Yeah. And third of all, we have to take doctor's advice because, you know, we're not medicals. So whatever the safest. And the way, I mean, we because we've been doing this for such a long time with the post-bariatric patients, I think we all forget um, bariatric patients are different than normal, you know, um, non-bariatric patients. Yeah. That who is actually going on the the mummy makeover surgery one your bmi definitely definitely needs to be less than 30 as low as we can get yeah. and also you know to, to get the best results they need to be stable you have to be well, maintaining that, no, your that's weight why, that's why i waited mm -hmm. you know my weight had been stable for i would say a good coming up for maybe 10 11 months exactly you know and that's um, that's and then also the thirdly um with the best of the doctor's ability ability and you know your healing yeah. and your healing process and everything if there is anything if you're going to be coming back and if there is any tweaks that we have to do um it's easier to do the tweaks with your arms and your legs yeah. or your face you know after the mummy makeover so mummy makeover you know um if people have this notion after a 10 you know stone weight loss that um that they're going to have a surgery and they're going to walk out as pamela anderson that doesn't no. you know it no, doesn't work just, it doesn't work, work that way that. it's a i mean the way that i describe it i don't know if you agree is it's like a reconstructive surgery yeah. you know it's a start and Absolutely. we have to start from somewhere I mean, it's a start and to make it safe we have to go with the doctor's advice not what we yeah. want ideally we want everything to be done at once and then walk out from the other side as perfect as we can get well that was it i mean because i had actually said to dr ramsey you know if i can get away you know we're just getting a lift and without having any implants that's what mm -hmm. i would prefer but mm -hmm. dr ramsey was like absolutely no he went no and I, I just didn't have enough tissue left yeah you know i mean so everybody that's you, it everybody is different some yeah some people have the tissue and they don't need the implants some people um don't have the tissue will need the implants to get the results you know the final yeah. results that we want so it's always good to listen to the professional obviously it's our body and our choice but still um 100 percent we have to take an advice from somebody who's been doing this for years yeah. you know he's not just started his career and he's not done you know five surgeries you know just with us he's been working for the five years and for the five years mainly what we've been doing is a post bariatric surgery yeah. and you know working with the you know different doctors different surgeons what i see is not everybody is great at everything you know they all differ and they all specialized in different things yes so you know um we talk about it and then i always say to you or oh, if you're considering some da -da -da, let's yeah. think about this okay um so after your mommy makeover would you describe people what did you expect for pain um i kind of knew i didn't know what to expect um but were you comparing it with your sleeve i didn't compare it with my sleeve no. because i didn't have pain any pain because yeah, I, I, I mean i was literally when i had my gastric sleeve once i was back in my room mm -hmm. i was up and walking 40 minutes later i know you know I that. and i just walked and walked and walked so i literally didn't have any pain at all with my sleeve and so how was the, how was the mummy makeover pain so the then? mummy makeover i would say i think the worst bit is coming round because you're freezing 
it, not everybody but not it's your everybody, reaction to the I, I was, yeah yeah it's like trying to stop the shaking sure. um but you know bring the extra blankets and things like that and then i was fine but again when my mummy makeover i was up and walking that night you know and yeah. that was after a seven hour surgery yeah um the worst part with the mummy makeover is you get a sore back because you have to walk hunched over yeah so it's not pain as such from the surgery yeah. it, it's more discomfort because you're your back, uh, your back definitely gets sore because you're you're walking. It's, you can't that, walk upright. Yeah. You have to walk, you know, yeah. bent over. Yeah. yeah. I mean, th I think that it's uncomfortable. I mean, how did you find the drains? Um, the drains. So, I think I had my surgery on the Saturday, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure i got my first two drains out on the monday morning yeah it probably yeah um i did go to the hotel was still with two in but i think i saw dr ramsey again on the wednesday and he you know tweaked them out and they're not sore coming out no but, you know it's you know i bought myself a little little bags that thing that ties around my waist mm -hmm. um, and I just popped them in there and wore, yeah. wore loose button-up dresses which makes it easy you know what I mean you don't want to have to do you don't want to be doing anything where you're having to put stuff over your head my advice would be everything you take with you you can make it that it buttons from buttons you know front button up absolutely um or loose stuff that's easy to to pull Didn't. on yeah you know. absolutely absolutely uh, and um, was the mummy maker with the last thing no <laughs> okay <laughs> so i have been back with you again in may of this year uh-huh so, and originally was books for arm and thigh lift with Dr. Renzi. And then Dr. Renzi had his accident and broke his arm. Mm -hmm. so, so I obviously, I was given the choice. I could either wait, but we didn't know how long it was going to be yeah. before Dr. Renzi would be fit. Or I could change still keep my exact same dates and i had all my flights and everything booked so it was easier and it was dr osman and dr onder that um did my arm and my thigh lift and two days before i was due to come <laughs> i added in an upper eye lift oh yeah oh yeah, yeah i remember that i have to say the, i mean oh, i know yeah. i've seen you they are great yeah absolutely brilliant love them yeah. Every, everybody that says to, that sees me that hasn't sort of seen me for ages will go you look really different yeah. <laughs> your face it, looks really different it does it does you know it kind it of just, it's brightened you know, people, your it, brightened you yeah. yeah so you had your arms and your thighs with dr osman and dr Endo. And they like, work as a team yeah. and your eyes as well they work as a team so you know um so to shorten the surgery time yeah. as well as anything else and they are great um you know specializing yeah. faces your results to them yeah um and and my again my advice to anybody is follow your instructions yeah that you're given you know i mean you 
it have been absolutely brilliant. I mean, you were a big smoker. I mean, I know that and I know what you feel um, because I am one. Yeah. And basically, do you remember me and you sitting down and bartering that you have to stop smoking before your mummy well, makeover? That's, and so obviously, you know, I don't smoke cigarettes. Um, I use a bake, but you were like, no, you need to go to zero nicotine in your bake. Mm -hmm. Um, but anybody who smokes cigarettes, you know, stop smoking well before you're due to go. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 100%. Um, absolutely, 100%. And I would say to anybody who is going for gastric sleeve, if you're a tea or a coffee drinker, mm -hmm. the last thing you want to do is be going through caffeine withdrawal at the same time time as you've had surgery yeah so switch to decaf yep 100 percent. it's I'd, just I'd, the I'd, basic I'd, you know i'd stopped my normal coffee i mean i used to drink between eight and nine cups of coffee a day yeah was a complete addict and i was like no um you know and i had, had the headaches here rather yes. than having the basic Basically, obviously, learned this, you know, um, after this many years, after six years, it's a case of um, stop everything, yeah. you know, forget about food, funerals, 24 hours, yeah. going for kebabs 24 hours before your um, surgery, because you mentally you need to be ready, physically you need to be ready. And the last thing you want is your Diet Coke, you know, um, withdrawal symptoms, yeah. caffeine withdrawal symptoms headaches 100%. headaches and everything else goes with it go yeah. through alcohol you know go through all of that before you actually arrive for the surgery and that's why it's so important you know to get actually physically and mentally ready for the surgery and same again for the you know for the mummy makeover your healing was great because you know like you stop smoke you know vaping i still call vaping i mean smoking <laughs> vaping is smoking <laughs> It's very really confusing. Yeah. Um, and anyway, every time you correct me, I don't smoke, I wave. I'm not going, it's the same. Um, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. Same, same, but different. Um, so it's either you stopped, um, you stopped with your nicotine, you stopped, yeah. with, you know, and you increase because you're, you know, um, post sleeve patient, you increased your protein intake. And yeah. then, you know, after the surgery, that went on till you healed completely. And Absolutely. You know, we've seen your differences, you know. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, in my, I mean, the scars from my mummy makeover, well, you've seen them, they're barely visible yeah. at all, you know, and my arms and my thighs are, are looking great as well. I know. I've had, I've had absolutely no issues whatsoever. Yeah, and what, what were we talking about? Um, the arms healing, though, is difficult, isn't it? I mean, is the legs harder than the arms? No, I found my arms mm. harder. It I can was... just imagine, I can imagine that, um, you know, like, because you use your arms, you know, every time you reach for something, every time yeah. you know, you're lifting something, picking something up. Well, yeah. That's, a, you know, you, you've just got to be, obviously, if you are going for arms and thighs, um, you know, if you're, if you're traveling alone, definitely 100% make sure that you're um even if you're only taking hand luggage it's make sure in. that it can go in the hold mm -hmm. so that you're not, not having to try yeah and lift it yeah um there are questions that are coming through i'm going yeah. to um i'm going to go through them but let's um go through like we we done the sleeve we done yeah. the mummy makeover yeah um, it was breast lift with implants and tummy tuck, yeah. and and then you done the arms, you done the thighs, and what's next? Or is there next? Well, I said when I had my arms and my thighs and my upper eyes done that that was me finished. But I mean, um, still considering basically, uh, yeah, yeah. 
just a bit of a neck lift and maybe a wee lift in the face because obviously you know when you lose nine stone in weight and, and at my age I mean I'll be 63 next month mm -hmm. then yeah and you know my skin's not going to bounce back like somebody who's 25 years old no no so like, yeah um the older we get, the skin loses its elasticity. You know, yeah. we're not, you know, yeah. um, producing the same amount of collagen as we were doing before. I mean, um, I mean, of, I mean, I think Jessica is saying you look amazing, but we all say, you know, Morag has been looking absolutely fantastic um, from the day one. But um, on Saturday, we were just looking at Morag, going, oh, now the just this bit doesn't yeah, fit just, with the rest just, of the body. Yeah, it it doesn't quite fit with the rest of me now. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, you started doing something and we have to keep going and going and going. I think, like, we have to draw a line, but... No, 100%. Yeah. You know, it's, I, it's not... I'm not trying to say to people that I'm addicted to having plastic surgery, no. but yeah. obviously, you know, this at my neck is never... It, it's, it's not going to go away it, it's, on its own. It's never going to go away on its own. Yeah. You know. Aye. And I think the treatment plan is like a lower face lift and a neck lift um, yeah. and a little bit of a fat injection to around here to get rid yeah. of these smokers lines because they, yeah. you know, you can't actually get rid of them with anything else, no. really. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that's that i mean um shall we go through oh i'm just yeah we've myself. got any questions yes I, um, there are some questions let me bring that down hello to everybody by the way and uh, we love morag um because you know especially at the beginning she's been there from the very beginning and you know she's been through pretty much all of our surgeries yeah. um and you know she you know she's really kind she gives up her time and she comes and talks to all of our you know um patients who's planning to come for a surgery during our consultation days in edinburgh which is always very nice and she always comes to our christmas parties which is even nicer yeah. because we get to see her in a nice dresses and um and you know if you have any questions she will be the best person to kind of talk to because she's gone through it all and she kind of knows, um, you know, what you are planning to go through. Um, and she had the health issues as well at the beginning, um, you know, um, and we had to yeah. get her ready yeah. for the surgery. Um, and yeah. so, just to say, mm -hmm. after my sleep, mm -hmm. so within 10 months, mm -hmm. I, I was off half of the medication that I used to have to take for my, my breathing don't need to take it at all now amazing you know so health health benefits 110 percent incredible incredible um i found the sleeve more i'm um, just guessing i found the sleeve more painful than the mummy makeover it's because um with the sleeves um if you're suffering with the gas pain yeah it's always you know worse i didn't really have a pain after the mmo um i just felt dizzy getting um my fluid pushed out the drain holes I was stingy at first but felt relief yeah when it comes out it's oh, yeah um i don't even like watching it um i want a thigh lift next um and I, I had a year of therapy to work on my head side so i was ready for sleep with thsd lost nine stone and maintained incredible well done jessica um what did you have done um to your ties i'm booked in for a gastric sleeve in december um um morag had a um thigh lift um was yours extended tie lift or, yes um yeah because your weight down, loss so, yeah so i've got an extended arm lift mm -hmm. and an extended thigh lift so um they literally had to come down past my knees because otherwise i would be left with big bulges of skin 
round about yeah. my knees. So yeah. yeah. Um, what was the thigh pain like compared to your mummy makeover? Thigh pain, I didn't, and I'm being honest here, I didn't really have a lot of pain from my thighs. I, it was more uncomfortable, bearing in mind, when I woke up after my arm and thigh lift, I didn't have any drains in mm -hmm. at all. I only had drains with my mummy makeover. And it's the way that Dr. Ronder and Dr. Rosman actually perform the procedure mm -hmm. that allows that, you know. Um, it, it was my arms because you obviously you can't lift your arms. So the first day that I was allowed to have a shower, I wasn't able to get my arms up far enough to wash my hair. Yeah. But when you've got a friend like Gillian... <laughs> she does that for you. She just comes in and does it for you. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah. I'm sure you did it for her too. Yeah. Um, that's it for now. That's the questions. Um, so obviously you've done your research at the beginning and you you know even we said no to gastric sleeve at the beginning you waited till we are I, you know I ready to say yes it, you know. and you know uh, you know it's basically especially with all the bad press in the last you know couple of weeks um in uk i just want to you know one thing that i will say all um all of the cases when i look at them i see one thing and their bmis are far too high for a mummy makeover surgery yeah and you have to guys you have to it's not just you know it's not just the um yes the doctors and the surgeons and the the medical tourism companies that you're going to is going to have to say no i'm not putting blame onto um one person but as a consumer as as a patient you also have to do your own research you know just because you want it we can't just say yes no it's 100 well you know, the health store turkey showed that when they refused me for my gastric sleeve, you know. Mm -hmm. But I went to my GP, I got referred to a consultant at the hospital in Edinburgh, mm -hmm. and I was under them, and basically the, med the medication that they had me on mm -hmm. then stabilised my brittle asthma. Yeah, to a stage where you know I didn't have to be on steroids all the time. The medication that I was taking daily was enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it worries me. You know, like um, people sometimes people come to the house door turkey page and then you know like I'm um, making an inquiry for a gastric sleeve, and they say, oh yeah, I'm forty five, my BMI is thirty five, and um, and you know I. I'm taking you no know, tablets or I'm taking da 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 tablets. Guys, if you don't complete a proper medical questionnaire yes. that assessing you for all you know, all conditions and that's a record that goes to the surgeon and stays for the surgeon, you're just talking to a booking agent. You know, even though you think you're talking to the doctor's page, you know, the surgeon is not sitting there answering your calls. Yeah. He's given yeah. their Facebook that he's given that you know his um you know he's given his social media to someone else to manage it. You know, otherwise who's gonna be doing the surgeries, who's gonna be doing the inquiries? So I mean, what I'm trying to say is, we, you know, as a patient, we have to do what's right for us too, you know. And, you know, if it's basically, if it's too much, you know, we couldn't do your mummy makeover and your arms at the same time. Yeah. You know, but the exactly. Amount... You know, 110%, I agree with that. And I have, and the only reason that I was able to get my arms, my thighs, and my eyes done because it was Dr. Ronda and Dr. Osman both operating at the same time. Yeah. So, you know, it you has can't to go be for a mummy makeover and say, well, I want my eyes done as well because it would be too much be if it was just one surgeon. 
and 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 that and also the amount of tissue that is being removed yeah. the amount of fat and tissue that is being removed from you yeah. there is a um basically the the risks are too high you know when it goes over five to six liters i mean um it can there is a safe zone for every surgery and those safe zones are there for a reason because you know the complication rate that is being studied and known and for that reason we have to we have to kind of you know do our own research just because oh yeah my friend you know um you know my friend went she was fine um but your bmi is not the same as your friend your yes. health conditions every, is not the same every, as your friend everybody is absolutely different so for instance when i came for my mommy makeover mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, had all my blood tests, but again, because I'm asthmatic, they did a full chest x ray, you know, and that chest x ray actually showed up something that's in my lung, mm -hmm. which I would never have known about. And my discharge paperwork, you know, obviously re recommended follow up with a CT scan. I've handed all that into my GP surgery and I'm now under the hospital for that. Now, mm -hmm. I would never have known about this, Nihal, because I had no symptoms yeah. whatsoever. And the consultant at the Royal Infirmary, you know, people say the bad press about Turkey actually turned around and said to me by the way that's an extremely extremely experienced radiologist to have been able to pick that up on a standard x-ray yeah it's you know it's it's basically you know um where are you going which hospital are you going to um are they you know like there are certain questions that you need to ask i mean um the icu unit what level is the icu unit do yeah. your own research and have a look at i mean google translate translates pretty much everything um you know like have a look at their turkish translations and uh, turkish reviews as well you know see what people are saying about that particular hospital yeah um somebody's asking um uh, do you have to follow a specific diet before having a gastric sleeve surgery oh so, yeah so obviously and again it's dependent on your bmi mm -hmm. So once you've filled in your medical questionnaire and you've been approved for surgery, depending on your BMI, um, prior to you going for surgery, you'll get an email yeah. from the health store Turkey, from the dietitian, and yeah. it may be a three-day LRD, it may be a two-week LRD, or it may be a three-week LRD. Yeah. And that's completely everybody's different it's not the same for everybody no we're not a factory we're not a production line and as when you complete we always ask people to complete the medical questionnaire once the medical once the medical questionnaire gets completed it gets is submitted to the surgeon and you know the surgeon then you know reads it and makes his recommendations if you have any medication that you need to stop taking before you're coming over um, if you need, if you're taking any blood thinning um, medication like the aspirins and you know some yeah. heart, you know some heart medication, you need to go on to Clexan. We can pres you know, he can prescribe you for yeah. Clexan and make the recommendations to your GP. And if you have any conditions that we need advice from your GP, we will ask for that advice. You can go to your GP and you know you can go yeah. to the specialists, and also. The, the LRD is not a um, dirty word. You know, you're going to have to follow a specific guidelines after the surgery. Yeah. And, you know, what basically, you know, uh, what LRD does to you is puts you in the right, you know, frame of mind. And also with the liver, with the, um, basically, if when we put weight on, the liver goes, you know, grows over yeah. um, the stomach and the least amount of um disturbance we cause to internal organs is the best so when we're putting the trocar through 
Um, so, I mean, I've heard things being said, um, oh, if somebody is asking you to do an LRD diet, their surgeon is not really experienced or they don't have the, okay. that they don't have the equipment to use. I mean, liver carter diet, uh, the, the liver carter um, is a little gadget. It just use, you, you put another incision, you move the liver out the way, you can still do the surgery. It's not, you know, that's not yeah. the skill. The skill is actually, as a patient getting your liver into a healthy state yes. um, so that it can function properly 100 percent so you recover faster um and also with less disturbance I and mean, less risk of complication so yes. that's why it's there yes can it be done if you don't do it yep but it will be you who's you know struggling at the end of it if you don't do it so yeah why make it actually difficult for ourselves when we can make it um um when we you know when we can make it easy um so i am nine months post-op uh with health store experience was amazing well thank you so much and um is there any advice for anybody who is actually considering this surgery at, you know, I don't want to say this, your age, because I had it yesterday. Um, Somebody is actually um, saying I'm too old for this surgery and she was only 58. No. So when I had, I was obviously, I was 59 years old when I had my gastric sleeve. Mm -hmm. and, um. I was 62 when I had my mummy makeover, you know, and like I've said, I'll be 63 next month. And having had the gastric sleeve, I'm in the best health that I've been in for at least 30 years. You know, I can do things now, Nihal, know. that... Yeah, you can uh, dance me off the... Do you know what I mean? I can go to the gym and lift weights, and which I've never done in my life before. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't walk for my front door to the end of the street without gasping Yeah. Um, for breath. It was just, you know, it was, I, my health was horrendous. And everybody, and, you know, my GP has been one of my biggest supporters yeah absolutely i have to 100. say your gp has been absolutely fantastic i think yeah they could see the health benefits what it was going to give you yeah and and um and they could also see that you were never going to get that in uk in no in, i mean in basically time. it took me two years to even get an appointment with a dietitian mm -hmm. in the uk and yeah, absolutely. I qualified for bariatric surgery, but to be told that I could be waiting between six and seven years, it it wasn't an option for me, Neil. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It just yeah. wasn't. I'd have been I'd have been dead by then. Well, we are happy that you're still with us <laughs> and you can make us laugh. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And I really appreciate it. I think these kind of like um, chats are good for people who's actually considering a surgery. And, and, um, and for anybody that who's actually um, considering having a surgery and they can reach out. I mean, go and join. Yeah, absolutely, Nihal. You know, I've had quite a few of ladies who've, sort of private messaged me, you know, mm. through Messenger and said, do you mind sharing your photographs? And mm. I obviously won't put them up on the support page. Um, oh, yes, that's the thing there, about there, the mummy makeover. There's been some on there, yeah. but yeah, I'm happy to, I'm happy if anybody wants to message me um, to answer any questions um, and also share my before and after photographs you know yeah. um yes you do them on private i mean yes guys you know with, when it comes to um the plastics um, you know like the makeup yeah. and stuff and um, before and afters um like you wouldn't i always say would you allow us to put your pictures up on you know 
in public domain no so but we are expecting other people to do it and um, so people will do it you know privately so that's yeah. why you know um when um people come to the consultation day more won't mind showing them you know what what the scars look like what you know exactly, what it looks yeah. like and that uh, kind of stuff you know. um it's it's good to do that on a one-to-one -one basis yeah. and i always say um to everybody as well anybody who basically um wants to or considering a surgery always go and you reach out to anybody in private yeah. and see yeah. what they would say about the house store turkey it's not me it's not you know it's not um any of my staff or my you know um, the surgeons that we work with it's the people you know i stopped advertising um probably about no, it was July. It was two years. I haven't spent a penny on advertising. It's all basically my referrals. You know, um, it's our referrals. People bring people because, um, you know, because of word, their experiences. Word, yeah, word of mouth, Michal, mm -hmm. is the bad is the best advertising that you will ever get. You know, yeah, people giving their honest opinions who have already been. Yeah um it's basically your privacy your um you know medical you know like with the medicals we're not medically trained yeah. so therefore there is no reason why i should know your medical history and i wouldn't know the difference between one drug to the another even you know it hit me in the face as long as yeah. as far as i'm concerned it's something that you buy from the chemist and if i'm saying this and you know obviously with the medical complications that people can have it's no point you know for you sending a in a whatsapp message that is going to get lost and forgotten and by the time you go to have your surgery so it's always over you know but that's why um the medical questionnaire is lengthy it's in detail it gets submitted straight to yeah. the surgeon for surgeons to you know uh, for the surgeons to decide whether it's you're suitable for surgery or not yeah. and once you've done that we are more than happy to plan all of your journey and to the detail and we made different packages for a gastric sleeve so everybody's i mean guys i'm never going to it's never you know i'm never going to change i'm 47 and we've done this for six years and i'm not going to go with the cheaper equipment um cheaper staples um using reusable um you know staples and anything that is going to put your life at risk it's not going to happen. I'd much rather do less surgeries, a bit more expensive, so I can afford to, you know, actually pay for them. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but I'm not, you know, prepared. I'm, I was never um, going to do it. I'll ne I'll still will never do it. It doesn't matter if they're going to give away, go down to £1,000 for a, you know, gastric sleeve surgery. We'll never be £1,000 for a gastric no. sleeve surgery because the equipment that we use costs £1,800. So, yeah. um so what we made though we kind of like changed the packet a little bit so it made it more affordable so it starts you know like it came down and then you have the um the light package and then you have the um classic and you have all inclusive yeah. and you have the premium so depending on what you want um you tell us which one you want and we'll you know we can go and put you know um book your flights to organize you know uh, what you're coming home with to everything whilst you know like before and after surgery and yeah. also sleeve surgery as you would agree um morag it's not just not just the surgery it's the support you get after. it's a hundred percent um you know and i'm not going to say i mean those first six weeks are not easy but it's still the best decision mm -hmm. you i mean know. you're going to do a lot of changes if, if you you have to follow your instructions to the t you know yeah. you've got to dot those i's and cross those t's mm -hmm. and anybody who doesn't anybody who says oh i had a, a few glasses of wine at four weeks post-op why why would you spend all that money to put yourself at risk for yeah. a glass of wine yeah why would you or do drinking that? day after surgery because yeah. you could no um yeah
as I said, it's it's all different for everybody. And yeah. the way that I think that we are doing it right now is very tailored to the um, you know to the person. Yeah. And um, and we are there to be as, being a support as much as we can, and you know our surgeons are not pushed. You know Dr. Ramsey will only do one surgery a day. Yeah. Um. And Dr. Ender and Dr. Osman, if they basically going into the surgery, um, they will do um two surgeries a day because they can because there's two of them. Yeah. And um, but generally they'll stick to one. And Dr. Emre will stick to four to five surgeries a day, nothing more. But that's yeah. the only thing he will do per day. Um, again, for me, it's important um, to actually get to know everybody who has actually you know, had a surgery. If I don't get a chance to meet them in the hospital, I get a chance to meet them over here. But at least I know their names and when they had their surgeries and uh, all the details. And um, we are. I am in every support group. Every support group. Everybody who had a surgery with us, they can reach me. Yeah. They can reach me direct, um, and they don't have to use the group. If they have something to say, they can say outright. Um, and so, it's it's a case of you know choosing, making the right decision, choosing the right person and just yeah. don't, you know, it's not a blame game, you know, let's not blame one another. It's basically let's make the right choices and let's work together to make it a success rather than, um, you know, if you don't follow the guidelines, it's yeah. not going to work. No, absolutely not. I, 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 can, I can bring you the best surgeon in the world if you don't do what you're supposed to do, it still won't work. Exactly. I mean, it's a case of, you know, your gastric sleeve is not a magic wand. No. It's a tool neither, that you have to work with. Neither the plastics. I mean, you look, no. you've seen it yourself. Yeah. You neither the plastics. You still have to work at it. You yeah, still have to absolutely. keep it clean, look after them, eat, eat the right food, yeah. and you still have to do what you have to do. You know, I mean, that was it. I mean, before I went for my mummy makeover, I mean, I was hitting between 140 and 150 grams of protein mm -hmm. every day because yeah. I knew how important the protein was for the healing process. Yeah. So that's why even with the mummy makeovers, now we have to kind of like watch what you're having whilst you're in the hospital, making sure yeah. you're getting enough protein and your shakes and everything else yeah. in there as well. Cool. Well, I'm going to head down to London, Mrs. You enjoy yourself. And I have a long drive for the next couple of days, just considering I'm in Scotland at the moment, just yeah. killing myself. I mean, <laughs> I can't believe the sun is out. I close my curtains, but the sun is out in Scotland. Would you believe it? I know. It's, after it's the, a bit different uh, from uh, what it was. After the last two days. Um, well, Chucking it down when I got up this morning, but sun's shining here now. Sun shining too. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I'm here, Anyhow. and let's catch up before I go back to Turkey. And yes. look after yourself. Okay. Thank you. And you. Bye. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Bye.